<laughs> okay. So, uh, well, by the way, what was the thing we did on uh, on Monday? We finished electric force, and then we followed electric field, electric field. Okay. And we said that electric field has how many how many, how many equations describe the electric field? Two equations. The defining equation, which tells you the electric field, is defined as what over what? In general, in general. What's the defining force. equation of electric field? Force. force, force electric. Think of the unit. Newtons over, Newtons over, Coulomb. So it's force over charge. Which charge though? The source charge or the test charge? Test charge. It's how much force electric is acting on the test charge. Okay, that's the general equation. What's the specific equation for? A point charge uh, on the head, like sorry, in the surrounding of it. Three things. K. K. By the way, all equations of electricity have K in them. K. Uh, you no F anymore because we're not doing the general one. We're doing the specific one for a single source charge, like a big ball. K Q. times Q divided by D squared. D squared. Perfect. Okay. So we have two positive charges are located at a distance of what? 7.4 meters from each other. Okay. One charge, the charge on the right, has a magnitude of how much? How much? 4 Q. Four Q. How much is the small Q? We don't care. Four multiples of some Q. While the charge on the left has a magnitude of how much? 10 Q. The question is, find the point in between the two charges where the electric field is what? Which means also there is no force on a test charge experience exactly if you put it at that point. Okay, so basically here's the diagram. Do you have the diagram in your notes? Okay, perfect, okay. So, okay, everyone, before we do that question, could you put a test charge here? Everyone, could you put a test charge here and it gets balanced? Let's think about it. If you put that, by the way, test charge is always what? By default, to make our math and physics easier, positive. If I put a test charge here that's positive, would it ever, once I release it, would it ever stay still? No. Why? Because each one of those independently would push it which way? This way. So if you put something here, this one would push it this way, and that one would push it that way. Stronger or weaker depends on how far and how strong, but at least both of them would push it this way. Okay, would you say the same thing here? Yep. I mean, what's the difference? Again, if it's here, this one would push it this way, and that one push it this way. How about if you put it anywhere here? One of them is going to push it which way? This one is going to push it that way. And this one is going to push it what? This way. So is there a potential of canceling here? OK, question. If both of them are identical, where would, be the, where would perfectly be the cancellation point? Exactly halfway through. If one of them is stronger, it has to what? Is it going to be half or closer to one of them? Do you think it's going to be closer to the stronger one or to the weaker one? It has to be closer to the weaker one. If it's stronger to the strong one, the strong one already has more influence. So it has to compensate by being uh, closer to the weaker one. Okay, our job today is to find exactly where it is. So, randomly speaking, since we know this one is 4Q and this one is 10Q, I'm gonna randomly say it's somewhere between the half point and this range right here. So go ahead and just put some X somewhere there, anywhere you want, as long as it's on the what, on the right, closer to the right one than the left one. Okay. Thank you, for you. All right. How far is the whole distance? 7.4 what? Meters. Okay, so this is 7.4 meters. We've decided that we're gonna put it here. Now, do I know how far it is from this one? Right now, do I know how big this distance is? I also don't know how big this distance is. When you don't know something in math, what do you call it? X. So we're gonna call this X, and we also can call this what? X. If you use an X, you can use what? Y, right? But hold on a second. You already know that the whole distance is how much? 7.4. And you already assigned this to be X meters. Can you at least express the rest of it in terms of that? The whole thing is 7.4. This one took X. So how much is left for this one? 7.4 minus? There you go. Why use two unknowns when you can't just use what? One. Exactly. So there we go. 
That's an F. By the way, could I have called this one S? Yeah, by the way, always watch out for the question. Because sometimes, everyone, sometimes I tell you, where is the magic spot? OK, that means I didn't tell you which way to call the X. But sometimes I can tell you what, where is the magic spot measured from so and so. That means you either call it X and you let the math solve it for you, or you call the other one X, but that means at the end you have to what? You have to subtract from 7.4. Completely up to you. But always watch out for the question. If I specify, you have to tell me that exact distance. All right. So this one is what? 7.4x. OK. Um, how does the electric field of a positive point, positive, yeah, sorry, positive charge point away from it or into it? Away from it, which means if, let's say, we, by the way, you always focus on each charge one by one. So if I hide this one, completely hide it, and I focus on this one, are the vectors going in or coming out? So they're coming out. We don't care about any of the vectors except the one pointing exactly this way. So if you trace it, and you trace it, trace it, trace it, trace it, which way is it going to point right here? To the left or to the right? right? If you extend it, obviously it gets weaker as you extend it, but it's still there. It points to the right. As for this one, all of them are irrelevant except for this one moving, sorry, pointing this way. Which way does it point? Left. Perfect. Again, we said there's a potential for cancellation if two vectors are against each other. All right. So this would be the what? Uh, who knows how to say this Greek character? It's the Greek E. Epsilon. Epsilon. So this is the epsilon or the electric field due, due to the 10 cube. And that means the other one is E due to the 4 cube. Okay. What are we going to require those two fields to be at that point? Different or equal? No, no. They have to, as a vector, they have to add up to what? Zero, which means their magnitudes have to be what? 100% equal. Otherwise, if this one wins, everyone, if this one wins, that means if you put a test charge here and you release it, it's going to move this way. If this one wins, if you put a test charge, it's going to move this way. If neither one wins and you put the test charge and you release, just stay there, because neither one is winning, okay? It's like a tug of war, and both forces are equal, okay? Sorry. All right. So let's do the what? Let's, uh, let's do the math now. So uh, we are going to say, uh, I think you have a slide for that. So epsilon, and on, on the, on the blank slide for the calculation, sorry. Epsilon uh, 4Q must equal epsilon 10Q. Okay, what's the equation again for any epsilon? Sorry, the epsilon for a single point charge. Three symbols. Okay, so each one will have, so I'm going to put the equal sign. So each one will have a K. And then there's a fraction. Okay, what's on top of the fraction for each one? The Q, the, re the relevant source charge. So I guess for this one, you would just put what? 4Q, yep, 4Q. And for this one, 10 Q. All right. Distances. How far is the is this magic spot from the 4 Q? We said it's what? But in the equation, it's x what? It's x what? Squared. In both the force and the electric field formulas or uh, equations, both distances are squared. So uh, we're just going to put x squared. OK, how about the distance? from 10 Q to the same magic spot. Bracket, because the whole thing needs to be squared. So as a bracket, 7.4 subtract X, all squared. Okay. Okay. What cleans up, AKA what cancels out? K's, K's, K, K, U, can you do anything with the X's yet? No, because one of them is inside the bracket, so you can't touch it. Can you do something with the numbers? I mean, you are more than welcome to leave them as is. Can you, 4 and Q, is there a common factor? 2. So you can definitely slash this one and divide it by 2. So that would give you 2, and this would give you 5. Great. So our modified easier to work with equation would be 2 
over um, 7.4 <coughs> minus x squared is equal to 5 over x squared. What would be the long way of doing this mathematically? Cross multiply, expand, having to solve what? a quadratic equation, probably using the quadratic formula. You can do that, but what was the trick we did two days ago? I have two squares on two sides. <laughs> Square root everything. Even though two and five do not have a what? A good square root or an integer square root. Who cares? It's physics. You can always deal with that one. So, if you square root, what do you get? You get 1.41 over just what? 7.4 minus x equals 2. Point, can someone get? I think it, I think it's 2.23. Anyone uh, square root of five? I believe it's 2.23. 2.23. Two point two three so two four. Two point two four. Two four. And now I don't have a choice. Cross multiply. All right. Cross multiply will get you. The easy one is this one. 1.4x. 1.41x equals. Can someone get me what's 2.24 times 7.4? 16 point something? 15 point something? 2.24 times 7.4. 16.57. Minus. Oh, 5.8. All right. Minus. So 5.8. Minus x. Okay. What do I do now with the. Uh, how do I solve this? Collect like terms, so I have to move the minus x squared to the other side. But Nora has something to say, something very important. Um, something tells me that most of you are still sleeping after the trip. Go. Yes, the epic mistake that people do when they what when they expand, they forget there's a bracket here, which means this one attacks this one and also attacks this one. Otherwise, all sorry, your final answer would be completely off. So we need a what? We need a 2.24 coefficient right here. 2.24x. And now I can move, add, and then divide 16.58 by the addition of 2.24 plus 1.41. So x will be 16.58 divided by, now what do we get when we add these two? Because this one's going to change signs when it skips. Uh, 3. 3.65, uh, yes. Okay, what would the answer be? Hmm. You got 4.5. Meters. Yeah, hold on, that doesn't make sense. What's up? Oh, yeah, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, we're supposed to get what's half of 37.4? 3.7. 3.7. Yeah. So this distance should be even less than 3.7. We make a mistake. I think it's because, like, because like, when we were doing, when we were doing the thing, yeah. shouldn't it be 2, two over x squared and then 5 over 7? Oh, for Q, whoa, from here, that was a mistake. Yeah. What did anyone tell me? I thought, I thought, I thought. I thought I was no, right. yeah, you're right. 10Q, the distance between 10Q and this, the magic spot is the seven. Oh my God. Okay. Um, no, so, I thought I thought I was wrong because like, no, no, no. I have I I'm pretty sure I said it right as I was talking, but then I completely misplaced it when, when I actually wrote it. So how could we? Uh, I mean, we actually have to change it. So this becomes what? Seven point four minus x squared, and this just becomes what? Yes. Okay. Let's let's quickly change it. I mean, we have time. 
um, x squared. Okay, so uh, the two is good. So these two just have to flip. And these two flip. So we get uh, just, an, uh, just an x. And this one becomes 7.0. Oh, sorry, x squared. 7.4 minus x squared. All right. And then uh, this becomes x. And this becomes 7.4 minus x. OK. So these numbers will change. Uh, yes. Oh, yes. OK. Here is the whole thing. Okay, who's got uh, 1.4 times 7.4? Uh, so 1.41 times 7.4. So we're going to get 2.24 x's equals. What's 1.41 times? Because we're crisscrossing. 10.4 minus uh, 1.41 x, which means x is going to equal. 10.4 divided by 1.41 plus 2.24 is 3.65 oh, again. How much is that? That's definitely 2 point something. Let's not make it to 3. Two point eight five. Oh, two. So for two point nine. No, I only thought before. So. Oh, so two point eight. All right. Oops. Two point eight. Yes. Now that makes sense. This two point eight meters is less than half of, which is three point seven. Perfect. Everything is good. You see, just understanding the logic sometimes at least tells you. Should I accept this, or should I go back and review? Okay. okay uh, next question. Oh, sorry, not this one. Yes, everyone, this question. Everyone, this question is the opposite way. Instead of telling you what the charges are and asking for the what? Distance. The distance of this magic spot, or the location, I should say, of the magic spot, it's what? It's the opposite. They tell you where the magic spot is, and they ask you, what is Q1 and Q2? What is Q1 and Q2? Like, how big are the charges if the magic point is right there? OK, still, are we still setting up the problem the same way? Yes, because we are still stating that this one is positive, I guess, right? Yeah, if they don't say uh, what the charges are and if the magic point is right. By the way, could the magic point be right here and those two have opposite signs? No way, because if you place a test charge here and this one is positive and this one's negative, it's going to move this way. Or if this one is positive and this one's negative, it's going to move this way. So for, their magic, for, for there to be a magic point here, they both either have to be positive or they both either have to be negative. Let's just say they're both positive just to make the math and the conceptualization easier. All right, so um, we are going to say, let me just give you a slide. Okay, perfect, so you have the diagram enlarged. So, actually, do I have it at the next slide or not? I do, perfect, okay. So, uh, we're gonna call this one, uh, sorry, right here, I mean. By the way, this one is positive, and this one is positive. So this is epsilon of which uh, charge, Q1 or Q2? If it's pointing this way. Yeah, if it's pointing this way. And this one's positive, it is coming out of it. So E Q1. All right, E Q1. Oh, sorry, epsilon Q1. Which means by symmetry, this one has to be epsilon Q2. Great. All right. Um, they have to be what? For there to be a cancellation. They have to be opposite in direction, which they are, but equal in magnitude, which is what we care about. So um, epsilon. Q1 must equal epsilon Q2. All right. So K Q1 over something must equal to K Q2 over something. How far is Q1 from the magic spot? So, yeah, apparently one fourth of the distance. One fourth of the distance. So you can just say L 
over 4, but it has to be what? Squared. So if this is L over 4, and this whole thing is a single full L, how much is left from here to here? Yeah, if you take 25%, it remains with 75%, or 3 quarters basically. So 3 L, sorry, L over 4 squared. You can cancel now, but I think we could just clean up the bottom first. So let's say K, Q1 over. Uh, what's the square of L over 4? How do you square a fraction? Or how do you raise any fraction to a power? Yep. Yeah, it attacks each one. So it's L squared over what? 16. Equals K, Q2. Um, 9 L squared over 16. Okay. By the way, when you divide, when you divide by a fraction, eventually what's going to happen to the 16? It's going to what? It's going to always, whenever you, whenever you divide by a division, this one, it's like a double division, climbs all the way up. Which you know what's going to happen to it anyway. When, it, when, this is a, when there's a 16 here and there's a 16 here, what's going to happen to it? Cancel. You can cancel it from here right now. So we're going to cancel the 16s. We're going to cancel the L squares. We're going to cancel the Ks. Great. All right. So cancel the K. Cancel the L squared as a whole. And cancel the 16. So we're going to get Q1 over what? Uh, one. Just one. Yeah, just one. Equals Q2 over what? How can you solve this equation? In a way, it's solved, but how can you write it better? You got what? Yes, exactly. Why give it to me in a fraction where you can actually do it as a multiple? So, this times that. So that means what? Q2 must be what? Exactly. This charge must be nine times as big as this one for the distance to be this closer to what? To that. Done. That's it. By the way, question for you. What's the number here? What's the number here? So the ratio is 1 to 9, right? So the ratio is 1 to 9. What's the ratio of the distances? 1 to what? 1 to 3. What's the square of 3? 9. Exactly. Remember, basically because there's a square in the equation, it's not a linear relation, it's a quadratic relation. So if the charge is nine times as big, the distance is three times as big, or vice versa. Okay? And that's so this was perfectly the reverse of the one we just did. Okay?